welcome along to the Oxford Football Show with me, Danny Parkinson. We're going to be taking the opportunity now, since we're in the international break, to look back at all of our Yorkshire teams and assess how they've done so far this season. It's fair to say that it's a fairly sparse picture when you look at one club to the next. And I've got the two Yorkshire footballing experts alongside me to uh, talk all about this. Tom Feeney and Sam Bridges. Thanks a lot for joining us, lads. No worries. No worries. Uh, cheers, lads. Cheers, lads. Uh, there's only one place to start. We're going to start in the Premier League, Hull City. Uh, Sam, um, from what you've seen this season, I mean, I had them down only 11 games ago to go down without a trace. They expect to get 10 points, uh, but they are on seven at the moment, doing fairly well from what I've seen so far. Yeah, they got the points on the board early. It's not been great the last three or four games uh, for... Uh, I was going to say the manager's team, but he's not actually the manager. Mm. It still rumbles on all the problems at, at Hull City. So, yeah, I think they, they've done well. They got their, their two victories out quite early, but it's been a bit of a struggle since. Things, things started to catch up with them now, the, the lack of strength and depth in, in, in the squad that they, they've got. To be fair, they come up against some, some good teams, beaten by Chelsea at the weekend. They've, they've played Arsenal uh, as well. They've played Liverpool uh, quite mm. recently. So I think Hull will continue to, to put up a, a decent fight against the teams in and around them. But, yeah, you've got to look at, at the, the longer picture for the rest of the season and just with all the problems and the, the lack of squad, see what they do in January, should the takeover be sorted. Uh, but, yeah, it seems a, still a frustrating time. I and mean, You wouldn't like to be a, a whole fan right now in the Premier League, but mm. with all these issues. That's very true. I mean, they do have a spine of, of Premier League quality though, when you look at uh, some of your, your Livermores, your Curtis Davis, uh, Robert Snodgrass, who's been outstanding. Mm. I mean, he's gained uh, at least a point for, for all City. I mean, scoring that late one against Burnley. Uh, looked absolutely outstanding through the season, though. So, I mean, he's, he's, he's really added to the team. Yeah, they've got some top quality players. Snodgrass, as you said, he missed out last time in, in mm. the Premier League with that, that knee injury. So, back in, he's looking to, to really prove himself at Premier League level. So, yeah, they do have some very good players, but it is strength and depth. When you look at all the teams around them, there aren't too many teams where you look at it and you, and you kind of think if they lose two or three players, you know, they're, they're really hampered in, in terms of, of staying up in, in the Premier League. But you know, if someone like Snodgrass was to get injured now or, or a level more, then you, you kind of look at who replaces them, particularly mm. like the, the strikers and the, the creative players like, like Snodgrass. If they, were, if they went down with an injury or a suspension, then... You know, where where's the creative and, and the goals going to come from for Hull? Yeah, very true there. But Tom, we're going to look at it. There's a lot of dross in the Premier League. There's a lot of poor teams. Sunderland, Stoke, yeah. Swansea, all look like they could be up and out. They could actually survive this season, Hull, by not being one of the worst three teams in that league. Yeah, I agree in a way. I, I think Stoke will improve. I think that they've got the quality there. They've had a poor start, but they I will get going. I think poor start's putting it lightly. But, Dreadful start. Abysmal start know, is more like what you want to be saying. You, you look at Sunderland and the, the attitude that David Moyes has to me unfortunately for them I just can't see them staying up I thought up. he would have come out in his defence and then. no That's, no that yeah. wasn't going to happen but I think the thing is for Mike Phelan he wants the contract to be agreed there appears to be something where they agreed something in principle then he was about to sign it, he noticed that certain things had been changed and that's why the deal hasn't been agreed, but they need that stability. But, you know, looking at the losses so far, they've lost to teams, you know, you put them in the, the big team category, you know, Manchester United, Liverpool, Arsenal, Chelsea, they're good teams and the thing is as well, apart from Liverpool, they've not really disgraced themselves with a bad performance. Mm. That Liverpool one, they were just outclassed of it. Yeah, no, I would totally agree there. Uh, feels only right to move down a league now and, and not by too many places. I because Huddersfield Town, uh, 11 games in now, Tom, they are looking a very strong side, a very good side of that as well. Well, the Wagner Revolution, yeah, we said it during pre season and how many players he'd got in nice and early, bedded them in, and it's just been brilliant, an absolutely mm -hmm. incredible start. Not one Huddersfield Town fan would have thought they'd be top right now. You know, the thing is, every week they're going into games and everyone's saying, well, this week the bubble's going to burst. They're going to lose this one, then they're going to lose the next four or five. But mm. that simply hasn't happened. And I think the win against Ipswich was a, a massive one for the side because although Ipswich haven't been in the greatest run of form, to go to Portman Road and get that win, you know, another different goal scorer getting the goal for your side as well. Wagner must be absolutely delighted with how it's going. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. And Sam, when you look at Huddersfield Town and the teams have played so far, Villa, Newcastle, Wolves, and informed Barnsley in there, Reading, these are these are good sides that they've been taking points. Alright, they didn't take any points away from Reading. But the other sides have taken points away and they've actually been going out and win games as well. Yeah, and I think what they, they've done when we look at other teams uh, that we'll talk about shortly is, is that 
they've drawn games where maybe they're, they're playing well but Huddersfield you know, they've, they've been winning games when they do lose a game they bounce straight back and, mm-hmm. and get three points so to have that, that average points that they're, they're racking up at the moment real championship uh, winning form so yeah he, he seems to instill that in, in the players that even when they do lose the next game they're back at it they're not they don't let mistakes get to them you know there's been a, a one or two complaints about the, the goalkeeper and, and certain mistakes mm. but you know, they, they just bounce back every single game when David Wagner changes the team the players that, that come in have an impact when he takes people out it seems like it's the right time to, to give players a rest just every decision that he's making at the moment it is going right and the players delivering 100% on the pitch Can they do it? Can they get promoted this season? Uh, I think they, they can I think you know, no one said when the, we got to the last international break that they'd still be here uh, this one, people mm. wouldn't maybe expect them to, to fall away uh, a little bit. I thought they'd have a good season anyway. I didn't expect them to be at the top yeah. uh, going into October. But I think what he'd done, David Wagner, was the right thing and he'd put the right kind of side together and the, the right ethos to get out of the championship, the blueprints that we've, we've seen elsewhere before, uh, the likes of, of Burnley and maybe Hull and um, Blackpool to some extent in, in the past, but they're a bit more solid than, than Blackpool were. But I think that they can do it. I think they, they'll continue. I think I'd be surprised if they weren't top two uh, come Christmas Day. Mm. And then from there, it'd be interesting to see what Dean Hoyle does. Does he give his manager a, a little bit more funds in the window to, to bring one or two in and, and really go for it? Because I think this championship is wide open, given the fact that you see teams like Villa that have struggled, sat their manager, Will they be able to recover now? Come again, Derby languishing. Mm. So two of those fancy teams are right down the bottom of the table. So it's a, a lot of catching up that, that they've got to do to challenge Huddersfield. So I think you know, they've got a real opportunity to to have a good crack at it. And definitely, hundred percent, be top six for me. Yeah, very interesting. Yeah, I saw an interesting stat the other day, Tom. Every team that's been top after ten games has not finished outside of the top six in the championship. You've got to be looking at Huddersfield Town now, thinking they are a threat. Yeah, and I, th- I think the thing is, you know, three or four games in, everyone was saying, well, you know, it's Huddersfield, it doesn't really matter. They played Newcastle at the right time, they played Aston Villa at the right time, but those excuses have gone away because now people are actually starting to realise that Huddersfield are actually playing really good football, and David Wagner has a number of players who just seem to get the way he plays. Now, to me, Huddersfield Town will not finish in the top two. Newcastle will win the league, and Brighton will come second. Yeah, to I me, still disagree with you I, with Newcastle. I do. I think. I, I just think to me that them two teams are the best adjusted to go up. Norwich as well will be in and around there, but I think Huddersfield can be the team that scrape into the playoffs, and then you never know what happens. Norwich and Brighton for me, top two team going up. Cannot see. Newcastle going well, up. With the, the amount of money they've spent, I think they were. Uh, money doesn't always breed success. They've seen this season, they've been dropping points that a, a, a winning title team needs to be taking. Rafa Benitez, I'm on to you. Anyway, uh, <laughs> let's have a look at Sheffield Wednesday because I think Mick's bag's putting it a bit lightly. It's been a poor start for uh, Carlos Carvajal over at Sheffield Wednesday so far this season. They are only ninth. But I think a lot of people expecting them to be sort of second or third, you know, really pushing to get the automatics this season. Yeah, I think the thing is there's very high standards in place now because this is a team who were one mode army strike, you know, going wide away basically from mm. gaining promotion to the Premier League. So... You know, the, the reality is I looked at the game against Birmingham a couple of weeks ago. That was when they lost 2-1. They hit the post in the 93rd minute and conceded in the 94th. It's little things like that that don't seem to be going their way. And mm. the game against Brighton not only showed Brighton's strengths, but it also showed Wednesday's weaknesses because one or two things didn't go their way. And to me, they didn't seem to have a plan B. They very much kept to the same strategy. It wasn't going to work. And in the end, they lost that game. So I think for Carlos Caraval, to me, they will be in and around them places in January. January will be the big month for them, though, because they'll be given money to spend. Those new depths will be added to the squad, and that's when they'll be the team that get into the playoffs. Mm, interesting. What have you made of them this yeah, season? So? Yeah, what Tom was saying there about adding more players, isn't it? What they've done is added too many players to, mm. to last season. They, they had a that they got their money and they invested it and brought a lot of loan players in. And But they did have a stable team. When you look at Huddersfield, it's, it's you know the same kind of 15 players every week. And I think it's Sheffield Wednesday that Carlos Carvajal, now he's got so many strikers, he's trying to please everyone, it seems. Mm. And when you've got Fletcher, you've got Hooper. 
uh, Forestieri as well, and they've got such a, a breadth of a, attacking talent that it's quite difficult for him to, to keep everyone happy, especially when you've got top pros and everyone's got an ego and everyone wants to be playing and everyone's going to be knocking on the manager's door. So I think they've, they've struggled with that this, this time round so far is that they've, they've just got probably too many and he's maybe the balance is just not right you start them playing certain players slightly out of position mm -hmm. Forestieri's played wide whereas last time last season yeah. he, was, he was on fire down the middle as number 10 so it's it's, it's difficult for him this time around because he, he's he, like I say, he's trying to please too many players for me but I think if he just you know maybe sat someone on the bench for, for 10 games and, and they had a good run up until Christmas I think they, they would be in the the top six but yeah they've definitely got the quality to to be around the top six and yeah for me i i, I thought they'd, they'd pick up from where they left off and, and i had them down as a second this season but it's not quite gone to plan so far for carlos carver how about they just need to to kind of get a, the, the winning formula back and, and a bit of stability in the in in the team yeah, no doubt about that. It's going to be interesting to see what happens to uh, Sheffield Wednesday over the rest of the season. Elsewhere, we're going to talk uh, Barnsley because, Tom, uh, you had them down for a mid-table finish. Yep. Since you've said that, they've been like a slinky going downstairs, slowly <laughs> dropping from place to place, falling down. As we look at the table now, 10th in the league, they'll be happy with that. But have we started to see Paul Eckingbottom's side peak, especially everything that's happened off the pitch? Yeah, I mean, you know, those off the pitch distractions obviously will not help. And Paul Eckingbottom now, I think he'll just be glad that he's got a couple of weeks in place now where he can just focus on being with the players, getting a new assistant in and, you know, trying to move on from that. But to be honest, I said they'll be mid-table. I stick by that because what they've got is they've got players in form like Conor Horahan who has proven that at the championship level he is good enough. You know, they've got Armstrong who... You know, to, to me, you should be playing for Newcastle week in, week totally out. Totally agree. Never fantastic mind, player. Never mind, you know, going out on loan yet again. He should be in that starting lineup. So, a fantastic signing. Whether they lose him in January, that could be interesting. But it's all there to me, you know. Even the game against Leeds, you could argue they were a little bit unlucky in the end not to, you know, they get it to within a goal. They get one more chance. It can be a, a draw. So... Just for me with Barnsley, they're a team that don't draw. They either win, they win or they lose. The only draw they did get was obviously that very good one against Aston Villa, which obviously has also led to Roberto Di Matteo's eventual departure. Right, so there we have it, Tom Feeney, the Barnsley either win, lose or draw sometimes. Anyway, let's hear from uh, Paul Heckingbottom. He was talking uh, after uh, that defeat to Leeds United. There's more positives. Um, and I'm talking individuals there, so I'll make sure they remember that. Um, that they bring that for when the international breaks over. It's been a tough week, obviously, with everything that's yeah. happened. Uh, are you pleased with the way the lads have just cracked on with it today? Yeah, definitely. I, I, that never, that was never in doubt for me. I knew, I know them players really, really well, and never, never questioned that their application and, and their effort and, and why, why they work how they do. That's what's brought them success. So that's what we'll keep relying on. How would you sum up the start to the season then for you now? <coughs> yeah, again, spoke the lads in there, so we sort of chunked our season around the international breaks as planning, how we're working them physically, and we've had you know two blocks of work now, 16 points from 11. We'd have been happy with that before, but the next challenge is more points in the next break, do you know what I mean? And, and that's it, and then we'll rest recover again, and then we go again. Um, and that's how we're looking at it. Are you happy with the way the lads have adapted to this level of football? Yeah, oh, I wouldn't say that there's been a game where... Uh, they've not been in it. And, you know, we were disappointed with Brighton away. And not taking any credit away from Brighton, they might have been unbelievable on the day, but we're bothered about us. We just didn't, again, we didn't cause them problems. Apart from that, we've caused most teams problems and obviously you know, one's fair share. How long's how long Jamie here for? It's short to say, it just timings work perfectly. I've known him a while. Mm. Uh, great lad, he'd be big out to me and the players. and. You stand what you're doing this weekend type thing. <laughs> yeah. and, and he came in yesterday to meet everyone. Um, and yeah, he, he, so in the short term, he's going to be a big help for me. Presumably, he kind of enjoyed it and, and that, despite the result, of course. Who, Jamie? Jamie, yeah. Yeah, like, yeah obviously, um, he's thanking me. I'm saying, no, no, you're doing me a favour. Like, do you know what I mean? He's been, he's great. I'm delighted that, you know what I mean? He's, he's, he's a good guy and I'm just delighted that he could come in and help out. 
So there you had it, Paul Henkenbottom speaking uh, to our man Matt Wilson after that game against Leeds United at Ellen Road. Uh, time to turn our attentions uh, to the white because 11 games in now, uh, you were shocked by how well Gary Monk's done or is it a bit more disappointing from what you first thought to start says? Well, I'm, in a way, I'm surprised he's still in the job. You know, with, with the amount of pressure he seemed to be under again, this is how fickle football is nowadays. One or two bad results and all of a sudden Gary Monk is on the way out. But look, Gary Monk is a manager who has that Premier League experience and what he's doing is he's building from the back. It's, and it's ser seriously, he's working for the side. So mm. I think there's good days ahead for Leeds United this season. If there's a cliche klaxon, <laughs> there'd be quite a few in there for that one. Uh, what have you made of it so far then, Sam? Yeah, I think it's exactly what Gary Monk said, that he came into the job quite late. It was going to take him a bit of time to get used to his players and get the right system in place. Uh, early doors, you know, in August, he, he messed about with the system a little bit, but it, things have settled down now and he, you know, he's picking pretty much the, the same kind of team every week, you know, give or take maybe a couple. So again, he's getting that consistency, he knows the way he wants to play now and mm -hmm. you know, leads a are flourishing as a, as a result of it as Tom said solid at the back Pontus Janssen and Cal Bartley a real good partnership there at centre half which is, is vital Rob Green's again picked up a bit more confidence now he's got a settle back four in, in front of him and then those in, in front are, are starting to play well as well so I think the, the signs are good uh, it's just whether you know, the Leeds can keep that run going and whether there are you know more problems ahead uh, that as we've seen in the past as soon as things seem to centre settle down at Leeds something happens to derail it but mm. fingers crossed Gary Monk can you know keep the stability uh, and Leeds can can carry on in this this decent vein of form It'll be interesting to see where they are at, at Christmas now once this international break's done and they you know, we have a, another uh, good run at it let's see whether we can keep it going. Yeah, it's very true, and I think uh, when you look at stability, it's definitely uh, changed since uh, Belushi and Bamba have been taken away as that starting centre-back pair, and it's, it's really has improved uh, when you look at that now as well. But I've got to put you both for the spot here, lads, because I, I look at Leeds United now, I think they're not getting relegated, but they're not in the top six. Where do you put them down at the end of the season? Yeah, I'd agree with that. I'd say about eighth or ninth. I think I think they'll Still be. Still high. I think yeah. I think they'll be near the playoffs. I just think there's a couple of things lacking in that squad where you know other teams will be able to take advantage. How about yourself, Sam? Mm. Yeah, I don't know. I think they could possibly, given what we've seen, maybe have a push for the top six. Really? Yeah, I just think Gary Monk now now he's got everything settled. I think he's got a good backroom team there, and as long as he gets the stability, then I think yeah, I think Leeds have got the basis of a. A good squad. So it depends what happens come January. The, you got the Pontus Janssen thing. Can they make that into a permanent deal? Yeah. Or can they maybe get one or two more? And will if, you know, if they if they are top eight come January, will the club maybe gamble a little bit? We we know kind of a lot of the maybe the selling of the club, getting in the Premier League or being kind of top top six would certainly help we've got they've got a season ticket deal in place that, that again could cost the club quite a bit of money <laughs> um, so you know, will they gamble if they get to the top six and maybe just give Gary Monk a, a bit of money to, to bring one or two in so I think mm. a lot still to be dependent upon but yeah I think they could under Gary Monk be a top eight team I think they're a year off at least I think they're a year off at least to get in the top yeah, six. Yeah, we said that about Sheffield That's Wednesday last season and they got there. And but the thing is with Sheffield come. Wednesday, they've got a 20 goal a season striker, not Chris Wood that turns up every now and again. Well, Chris, yeah, but Chris Wood's, he's, if you look at his ratio now, he's, he's, he's getting that kind of, if you look over the last, mm. back end of last season into this season, he's, he's hitting those kind of ratios. So if, can he keep it going? Can he stay fit? And That's a it. A fit Chris Wood you know, could score 20 goals a season in, in the championship. But I look at, Leeds and I put up against Reading, Birmingham, Newcastle, Norwich, Huddersfield. Yeah. They've all had a lot more stability, a lot more money thrown to see situations that I just think that he needs at least till the end of next season to even have accomplished that top six now. Yes. So much quality in there with parachute payments. Well, there is, but then, you know, as we've seen many times before, the championship, it, it, there's always one team that that tends to have that run that's that's built on belief and team spirit and mm. a good style of play and as Tom said being solid at, at the back and, and well organised so hey, you never know there is always one team maybe that's already Huddersfield for this season that, that are in the that's top it. six but I don't know he seems to he seems to have the right formula Gary Monk and he's really showing himself as many people suspected as a, a top young coach so yeah I think 
remember that anything's possible for this season for Leeds, but I think more than people thought four weeks ago. Mm, but I do think part of the problem with Leeds United is the fact that there's too much built up. There is just too much expectation on the side. You know, every season they seem to go in with the same thing, we're going to get playoffs, we're going to get playoffs. Eventually, it's all, it all boils over towards the end of the season. No wonder they keep. It, it always happens in the same way, they always peel off. Mm, they, they, they do, but it, again, it seems that Gary Monk's level-headed enough and maybe he's the guy that, that can be the politician and can bring expectations down a little bit and just keep everything calm. He just seems mm. that kind of character, whereas I'm not saying other head coaches have, have got carried away with themselves, but I, I think that, the, as you said, the, the whole thing around Leeds and the amount of press that they, they do get, and maybe they can go under the radar a little bit more this season, the fact that there are bigger clubs in the Championship, like Newcastle, who are inconsistent, Villa, who've had a terrible start to the mm. season. Maybe this is Leeds' time, they're not the big club in the Championship anymore that are massively underachieving. Maybe there's a couple more that people will start looking at a little bit more. Maybe Gary Monk can kind of build something underneath the, the radar, given the fact they've had a slow start and they're, they're creeping up the table now. Mm. You know, there's not many, too many people talking about Leeds. That's true, that's true. There ain't a lot of people talking about Leeds. Uh, do get in touch. Uh, remember to, uh, to to like and subscribe and get in touch in the comments as well. Uh, do you agree with me or Sam on uh, where Leeds United finish uh, at the end of this season? We'll uh, be sure to have a look at it and pick up on it next week as well. Uh, but let's hear from uh, Gary Monk. He was speaking after that big win against Barnsley with our man, Matt Wilson. Look, it's very difficult because I have a group really competitive now and and they all want to play. Um, but I just felt the way that we've been playing, those guys deserve to start the game. But you see it all the time. We have players that come on and contribute. All those people in the squad, there's some unfortunate ones that aren't even in the squad who deserve to be in the squad. Um, so it's difficult decisions, but that shows how competitive we have the squad now, how focused they are on doing what, what we're asking them to do, and, and it creates a good environment. So now we're looking forward to each, each game, each training session. Um, and if that continues in that way, then we can be successful. Seems an awful long time ago you were sat there and you questioned, you said you've got to be tougher, the team have got to be tougher. Is that toughness coming now? Well, they're asking, you know, you're asking the right questions of the group, you know, and like I said, our character, our determination, um, our attitude, everything that we work on is coming more and more out in, into those players. They, they know exactly what they, they need to do. And look, the way that we've played in this period is, I think that's the example it doesn't need me to talk about it. It's, it's there on the pitch. It's very clear. So, um, but we have to improve, of course. You know, there's a lot of things for us to improve on. Um, but with this young group, the way they are, um, we're looking forward to each day and each game. And now it's a shame the international break comes. I think the last one where we went in with a loss, we felt it come at the right time. But this one, we just want to keep the games coming. So, um, a bit disappointed in that sense. But um, no, we use that period again, like we did in the last one, to do some really good work, correct the things that we need to correct and improve on the things we need to improve and, and try and come out the other side like we did in, in this period here. And four straight wins here, that must please you as well. Big crowd as well today, they'll have enjoyed what they've seen. Yeah, I think you're seeing that relationship really growing now. I thought um, the fans were excellent again today, a, ma a massive crowd. Um, but I think they can see what the, the group are trying to do. I think they can. I think they're enjoying it, you know, as much as the players. I talked about after the Birmingham game, I felt apprehension in the players and I felt apprehension in the crowd. And that was no fault of anyone's, that was just the way it was. And of course, performances and results help build that relationship. But I think the crowd can see what this group are trying to do and, and they're right behind it. So there you have it, Gary Monk speaking after that big 2-1 win over Barnsley at Ellen Road. Let's talk about a team uh, that isn't doing so well, and that's Rotherham. I uh, talked about uh, Barnsley being a slinky downstairs. They are certainly a rock into the sea. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's not been a great start, has it, for Rotherham? I think the problem is Ellen Stubbs has come in got a lot of new players in a lot of new talent and it just doesn't seem to be working yeah. I mean the only thing you can say is they lost to Newcastle 1-0 in a performance and a result they should have got something out of which is one of the few positives they've had and the, I mean the only thing is people are saying Alan Stubbs' his job but you know he's under threat and it, it obviously has to be mm. with where they are in the league but who comes in to take over because Neil True. Warnock has said you know he made it clear in the summer no would they go back and maybe try? You, you never know with him, but I just think for Rotherham, the problem is there's a lot of work to be done and whoever that new manager is, they will need one brilliant honeymoon period where they you know, get some big wins on the board because right now, to me, Blackburn and Rotherham are the two teams that everyone thinks will be in League One next season. Have Rotherham hit the cap, sir, do you think? 
with the sort of team that they are, they've been dancing with relegation for quite some time. Seems like they've been involved in this kind of a dance for quite a while. And as we've seen with other Premier League sides, you know, we saw it with Newcastle dancing with relegation for a long time. Sunderland look like they're going to go down. Now, you, you always see a team that have been doing that for quite some time. Do you, do you think it could be Rotherham's time this season? Yeah, I think pretty much, most definitely. I don't think they could probably get Neil Warnock back to, to do another miracle job. And I can't see anyone else that would replace Alan Stubbs that could do this, have the same kind of impact that Neil Warnock had at Rotherham last season. And I think, yeah, Tom said it there, a lot of new players have come into the team. And you know, you're looking, if you were Rotherham at the end of last summer, even if you don't get Neil Warnock to sign a new contract, you're looking mm. for someone to come in and just take that on uh, and not tinker too much, not change too, too much, because the team spirit was there. You know, it was a, a team that many people thought were down and out at one stage, but Neil Warnock got them believing. And then in the summer, you know, whatever it is, ridiculous amount of players came into into the club. That all disappears, evaporates very quickly. Mm. And you know, Rotherham have been left wanting all season. One victory, you know, even for a for a team, you know, that, that are like Rotherham that, that don't have a, you know, can't compete wages wise or, or with transfer fees. You know, you, you probably expect better. And yeah, the pressure is on Alan Stubbs. A lot of teams now starting to change as you hit that second international break. And you just wonder how long he does. Have less in in the job, given the, the short termism of, of football right now. So yeah, I think maybe his days are very much numbered. And uh, yeah, like you said, I can't really see who takes Rotherham massively forward at this stage. Mm, it's very true. And uh, I think actually one of the most important things that probably happened this summer was Adam Armstrong going to Barnsley rather than Rotherham uh, being able to have a goal scorer that uh, it just seems to be lacking for Rotherham at the moment. Yeah, and I think the problem you've got is, you know, at home especially, they've drawn games that they should have won. Mm. You know, I was at the game against Nottingham Forest and that, that's probably the one where they got the draw and were probably lucky to get that. But, you know, they played Bristol City, they played Wolves and, you know, especially the Wolves resort where they were playing against 10 men really they should have won that you know win that one that was the start of the season as well so, you know that just builds that momentum straight away but you know you're looking at Rotherham to to me Alan Stubbs has to be given time because they've they've gone with the decision for him they've let him get his players in and with Rotherham they're not in a position where they can just get rid of everyone and say the new manager gets a blank canvas mm. so I think they've just got to give him time and, and hope it does turn around so what do you think really get this season yeah Sam yeah, I think so. Mm, very interesting indeed. I think uh, Blackburn might pit into the bottom spot, but certainly interesting times over at the New York Stadium. Do wish them all the best along the way as well. Let's drop down a league and uh, look to uh, the mighty Bradford, uh, who have uh, been absolutely unbelievable so far this season. Uh, unbeaten start. They've uh, managed to... It's only them and Carlisle United in the Football League that have had, uh, you know, the fact that they're unbeaten so far this season, Feeney. Dream start for Super Call after this many games. Well, yeah, no, no Bradford City fan thought they'd be in this position right now. When, when Stuart McCall took over, you know, I spoke to him after a pre-season friendly and he said, if you've got a pair of boots, you can have a trial here. It's talking to it, you. It, you know, may, maybe must it have was. been worrying times <laughs> over at Bradford City. <laughs> but, you know, the, th the thing is, Stuart McCall and Greg Abbott and, you know, Kenny Black, a very good foundation there, have been able to get players in that they know and players that they trust. You know, Nicky Law is a marvellous signing he's, because he's a player that Stuart McCall knows so well mm. and he's just been able to, from day one, say, right, do this, this and this, it'll work. Nicky Law's gone, yeah, I trust you. What will do that? So, you know, the, the only argument you'd have with them is they probably should have a few more points on the board because they've drawn a few games that they, they should have won. And, you know, on another day, they've, they've only won five out of the 11 probably could argue they could have eight wins right now Ooh. with the res the performances so that's the only negative but it's been an incredible start and you know long may it continue for Stuart McCall well I think it's a great loss that you're not donning the Bradford City shirt to be fair Tom but uh, just to look at uh, like you were saying about a, 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 an out and out goal scorer it does seem to me that League One this year does seem void of proper goal scorers uh, proper strikers I mean obviously uh, Josh Morris doing wonders over at Scunthorpe not an out and out striker mm. though you look at that now, there's, there seem to be no sort of Adam Armstrongs like we saw last year for Coventry. No players 
that really seem to me, you know, sort of breaking the mould in League One. That's that's what's probably why it's so tight. Yeah, I mean, it's it's interesting because Millwall are struggling right now. They've got Lee Gregory up front in last mm. season. You know, he's a very very good player. He's oh, had a brilliant. couple of knocks and. You know, it seems to have just affected him for, for the here and now. But I think the big thing for Bradford is they're sharing the goals around when they are getting on the score sheet. They've not got just one player, you know, that they're having to heavily rely on. And that actually, you know, in the long run will be a big bonus for the side. Yeah, no doubt about that. Sam, are you impressed by your Bradford starts of the season? Yeah, I was slightly concerned when they were drawing all those games. Mm. We talked about with Huddersfield where they, they win one, they lose one, they bounce back, they're, they're kind of averaging that two points a, a game. It can always be yeah, a little bit worrying when you do draw, is it five in a row, four in a row that they yeah. broke and drew? Um, but then to, to get the win at the weekend, it was fantastic stuff. And you almost look at it the other way, Bolton, similar kind of thing, they, they drew so many games and then they've got beaten. And now all of a sudden they're down in, in mid table. Yeah, but yeah. Bradford, <laughs> second. Yeah. Uh, enjoy it while you can. But, yeah. you know, that, but that's exactly it. You know, the, the belief that Stuart McCall's got implemented at, at Bradford, you know, everything seems to be working well. And Tom said it before, you wouldn't have probably expected such a good start uh, in the summer when they didn't have too many players uh, knocking around uh, in pre-season. So yeah, a, a fantastic job that, that him and the team are, have done and you know, they've got to be commended for it. But you can see them you know, really building on this now. Yeah, no doubt about that, Phil Who Elsewhere, <laughs> let's look at uh, Sheffield United and the Blades. Uh, it's been interesting, uh, Tom, because they didn't have a great opening few games, but they've really got in the swing of things now. They're really starting to click now. Yeah, they, they are. I think the, the, the thing with this is Chris Wilder is a fantastic manager. Mm. You know, he re he's someone who's so underrated. You know, he's a Sheffield lad as well. And I think the big thing for that is the, the fans, even when that start had happened, and yeah, it was a, an abysmal start. You know, yeah. you, know you look at the, the losses they suffered. But the fans seem to, just because he's at one of their own, they seem to give him just that little bit more time and he's, he's turned it around now. You know, and they show great strength of character again. Another late goal against Fleetwood this time in the, in the draw, scoring in the 95th minute. That is what Chris Wilder builds into his team. And at Oxford, he had psychologists working all the time with the players. I don't know if he's doing that at United, but they seem to have that mental strength to just keep going, you know, when it does look like the chips are down. Yeah, very interesting indeed. Uh, Sam, do you think we'll finally see Bramall laying back as one of the away fixtures in the Championship? Uh, quite possibly. I think that it's, yeah, it's, it could be Sheffield United's year under Chris Wilder. I think they've tried so many different things with managers, with player recruitment over the last two or three years. Mm. None of it's really worked, but I think Tom touched it there, the, the mental strength and to... The home front Bramall Lane's never been great. So if they can you know, get that right, it seems like Chris Wilder's is doing that at the moment. That they can you know, really mount a, a decent push. It's going to be interesting to see with Bradford, with Sheffield United, both in the mix. Can we get two Yorkshire teams up from League One? I was going to say, do you, do you think they'll be the two automatic spots this time around? Uh, maybe not too automatic, but I I think they'll both be in the the top six this year. Mm. How about yourself, Tom? Yeah, I'd agree with that, but I do, I do think that. There's one or two teams that are just just going to be ahead of them by the end of it. Scunthorpe? Yes. Yeah, I totally agree there. Uh, elsewhere, we've got to drop down a league again. Uh, Doncaster, the team that we were shocked to see uh, go down last season. Darren Ferguson under a bit of pressure at the start after a dodgy few games. Really got into the swing of things now. Um, you know, really up and around there, challenging. And, uh, of course, I suppose you are going to do when you've got the likes of, of Coppinger and your team that have been a real talisman over the years. But, like I say... Doncaster looking good for them at the moment. Yeah, looking fantastic. And I think I think the big thing here for Donny is the win over Portsmouth at the weekend. That's your toughest fi fixture of the season, really. You know, to go to Pompey with sixteen thousand fans making Ooh. a lot of noise against you, and to pick up the win, it's it just shows it's a massive statement of intent for Doncaster. But the thing is, they've got such a strong eleven. Really, they've got a team that a, a squad there that's League One ready. You know, with the experience and with the goals that they've got up front, and you know, for Darren Ferguson, he just—he's never really panicked. You know, even when they got relegated, he—he he seemed to have this confidence that it was going to be all all right. And sometimes a manager has that, and you—you you know, they're a little bit deluded in their beliefs with that. But Darren Ferguson, rightly, very confident, and you know, great to see them up so high in the table. Yeah, I don't miss those bells down at Pompey, though. To be fair, I don't. Well, do, what do you make? I, I just find them annoying. 
Yeah, it's all right. It's all right. I think the great thing is, you know, for me, I like it when I go to a ground that makes plenty of noise. You know, yeah. a lot, a lot of grounds I go You're to do that. Sitting well. on the fence there, I'm not getting an answer <laughs> out of you on this one. Uh, just lastly, Sam, Doncaster, like we say, look like they're going to be going up all throughout this season. So they should be. They're a League One Championship setup, really, aren't they? Yeah, they've got everything in place, and I think sometimes maybe it, not necessarily good to go down, but it, it can kind of give it a little bit of a, a clean sweep. Or you maybe can get rid of some of the. Uh, make changes behind the scenes and, and you can come back stronger if you believe in your manager and you believe in, in what you're doing. So I think for Doncaster, yeah, it looks like you know, everything is kind of set up in, in the right way now. You know, the, the team are playing well, they've got the right manager in, in place and yeah, you see them, them going up and potentially uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be a bit of a fight if they, they carry on at, at the top to, to maybe win the title. Yeah, very, very interesting indeed and uh, looking forward to it. And remember, for all your latest updates, uh, you want to uh, stick here in the TV Yorkshire. Remember to like and subscribe today. All that's left from me is to say thanks a lot for joining us, lads. I'll see you next time around.